Hey guys, good morning. Today is one of those rare days where I get a little bit of time in the morning to myself. I'm on a palm rotation. Today we actually have a bronch in the OR scheduled for nine o'clock, so I don't have to be there until nine. These past couple months have been insanely busy. So having this rotation that's been a little bit more laid back and assessing just their lung function for heart failure or COPD exacerbations or a ton of asthma right now that it's the end of the winter months. I have to head over to the hospital now um, obviously, I would love to take the camera in and show you guys all that, but uh, HIPAA, can't do that. And today, we're going to talk about something that I'm going through right now, and the whole process of entering stuff into ERAS, and then also, after you're done, what do you then do with all that information? How do you make your match list? What do you use to make your match list? And what should you be kind of looking for going forward with those things? Morning. Morning. Yeah. Morning. How are you? I'm fine. Good, good. <laughs> So the bronch went well. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a bronch is, basically camera tube goes down into the airways, takes a look. Uh, they do things like pushing water through an alveolar, uh, bronchial alveolar lavage to try to collect cells. They put a brush down in and do that. We're going to post a video here, so if you want to take a look at what a bronchoscopy actually looks like, you can take a look at that. Uh, why they would do it in the OR is when you have a higher risk patient, they're worried about their airway, we want to protect that. Everything went well, so now we're uh, headed back to the floor. Alexa, turn the computer lights on. Okay. I don't know about you, but as soon as I get home from the hospital, I gotta change out of my clothes, put my kind of comfy clothes on, my little Sabres beanie, all that stuff, and just get comfortable. Uh, Sabres are playing later on tonight, so hopefully I'm gonna get to watch that, but for now, I wanted to talk to you guys about ERAS, the interviews, and the match. And we were gonna shoot that as like one whole, you know, long vlog. But it's just way too much information. It's too dense. We really have to, you know, kind of shoot this as three separate videos. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post a link to those videos here so that you can just kind of click around there. And as you're going through the process, you can click those videos and come back to them and, you know, kind of access them whenever you need to uh, as you're going through the whole process. Uh, but because we're cutting the vlog a little bit short today, I wanted to take the opportunity to talk about something that I, what I was talking with my pulmonary attending about, and that's the rehabilitation of a patient with COPD and kind of the pulmonary rehabilitation approach to helping to manage those patients. Yeah, so in order to do this effectively, we have to review a little bit of pathophysiology. Things like cigarette smoke, things like breathing in dust and, and being exposed to different chemicals and things like that lead to an entire inflammatory cascade that causes structural changes to the lungs that are permanent. Because when those inflammatory mediators are going out, it's going to do two separate things. And we can really kind of think of COPD as a combination of both an airway you know, restriction and, and a bronchial spasms and also an emphysema where it's actually damaging the alveoli. And both of those things together give us the respiratory problems that we see in COPD. All this inflammation and these structural changes in the lung is gonna cause this vicious cycle. People are gonna have exacerbations, their respiratory status is going to decline, they're not gonna be able to do a lot of activity, and that exertional dyspnea that they feel is gonna prevent them from doing any kind of exercise or really anything at all. And so you you can see how as a person's respiratory status starts to decline, 
their functional status and the things that they're able to do are going to also decline with it. The goal of pulmonary rehabilitation is really to try to decrease that rate of functional decline. So if you guys are with me so far, the key components of a pulmonary rehabilitation program in COPD are going to be conditioning, they're going to be breathing retraining, education, and then also psychological support. And we're gonna talk about each of these individually. All right, so now that we know the components of a pulmonary rehabilitation program, there's one in particular that I wanna spend a little bit of time talking about because it's specifically pertinent to rehab. So the key thing in a, in a pulmonary rehabilitation program for somebody with COPD is that we wanna work on conditioning and we wanna work on conditioning of both the upper and the lower extremities. And I mean, that makes sense if we think about it. We have a patient who's gonna be using their upper and lower extremities. They need to make sure that they preserve as much strength and as much function in those extremities as they possibly can. And so how we're gonna do that is, it's gonna be kind of a two-pronged approach. For the lower extremities, we wanna try to use continuous high intensity exercise and as much as they possibly can. Whatever their maximum rate of work is, we wanna just come down a little bit from that if they can tolerate it. If they can't, then we can try to run them through like an interval training type of a program. For the upper extremities, there's been a lot of research on supported versus unsupported exercise with a kind of a little bit of a favor being towards unsupported upper extremity exercise. And if we think about it, that should make sense. If you're using your upper extremities to do different tasks, to cook, to clean, to do those things, you're gonna be working against gravity. And so an unsupported exercise program would be great to kind of train that person for function when they get back to their house. When we're talking about breathing retraining, you know, uh, COPDers tend to be really tachypenic. So they have this rapid, shallow breathing. We wanna try to slow that down and give them a chance to kind of blow off some of that carbon dioxide uh, and really get a good tidal volume or as much of a tidal volume as they can. And so that's really the focus of breathing retraining. As far as your education goes, smoking cessation, making sure that you're getting your vaccinations and also use of the medications. I mean, the inhalers can be confusing for people. And then the psychological support. I mean, obviously we can't talk enough about how important it is to talk about the psychological effects of chronic disease. So for all patients who are started on a pulmonary rehabilitation program, what we see is that they have an overall decrease in that sense of dyspnea that they feel. They have decreased rates of hospitalization, they have decreased utilization of healthcare overall. And by far, I think one of the most important things is that they have this increased quality of life. All right, guys, so that's it. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. You learned something about uh, adding a pulmonary rehabilitation program to the treatment and to the management of COPD. Remember that important thing at the end there that we just mentioned was the quality of life. I mean, for patients with COPD, they know that it's a chronic disease. They know that they're gonna have it forever. And if you can preserve their level of function Function for as many years as possible, keep them doing the things that they love. That means so much to them. And I think that should be a really big focus as we move forward. And that's kind of where rehab fits in and the, the rehab mentality of kind of looking at the world. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Watch the videos uh, that we posted about the match and ERAS. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to post them in the comments down below. I promise I'll get back to you. That's what I'm here for to help you guys out as you go through the process. If you didn't find the information that you're looking for, we're here to answer your questions. So you guys keep studying hard, take care of yourselves, and we will talk to you again real soon on the next vlog. Bye now.